Hello and welcome to our short session on how to set up a PID block in a Panasonic PLC. First of all, we start off with the actual instruction, which is an F355 PID DUT. We're just going to drag that and drop that on our page, and we need to give it an actual name for the PID block. In this case, we're just going to use it as an example to heat some water. So we'll just call it water temp and define that in our new variables. It is a data type or a PID DUT31, so it's not a word or an integer, it's actually a PID DUT. DUT is basically an array, a predefined array by the manufacturer built into the software. Click OK. Now up the top we can actually see we have that there in our variables and we have to create some initial values. So when we click on the, the initial value we get a box uh, and in here we can actually set up various components of that PID block and that is things such as the control word so we can set it up for PI and D or IP and D or we can set it up for heating or cooling depending on what we set in the control word. So various bits within the control word have various functions and make the block act in a particular way. We can also set up things like an initial set point and we just click on it and we might put in there a set point of maybe, I don't know, 5000, so half scale, just for the purposes of this exercise. We might have, and this is an initial set point, it could be anything later on. We can always write back to this box uh, or to this function block at a later point in time from the program simply by addressing these internal variables. Um, our process variable, which is our incoming sensor value, we're going to bring in from our analog input of the PLC. Our MV is our manipulated variable. That's our outgoing analog value to, say, a valve um, or something along those lines, depending on what it is. We have a lower limit and an upper limit, so if we want to work within a span, we don't want to stray too far out of that, then we can put in some initial values here, and we might put in an initial value of, say, 2000. And we might put an upper limit of the full span of 10,000. Then we come to the KP, TI, TD, and TS. Now, values in there can be pretty much anything you like to start with, but uh, I'm just going to pop in a number of different values here, and we're going to start with maybe 10 for the KP. I'm not saying these are right or wrong, but the auto-tune function that the function block has does allow that to be adjusted later on as the uh, system goes live. So in the TI we might put 100, TD, I'm just going to put maybe 50 in there. The TS is the sample time, um, and if we wanted sample time of uh, maybe one second, we might put in there 100. Okay, the AT progress is something we can read back. That's actually the auto tune progress, it gives a five step auto-tune and you can monitor that simply by reading that value directly from the function block within your program so you can see that it actually is doing something it's working. Okay so we'll close that box up and click OK. We now have some initial values in here so if I hover my mouse over you can see that we've got the initial values. Okay so the next thing we need to do then is to actually bring the values in and out of this function block by simply using move blocks. Now we actually need, need to get the basics going, three different move blocks. So I'm just going to simply select move. And we just want a plain move uh, without an ENO. E and, and I'm going to drop four of those, or three of those in to start with. Recently used, move again. And a third time in there. Now, what we want to do is to start with bring in a set temperature. So we're actually moving into the block, so we have to put the variable from within the block here. Now anything within the block is named water temp dot and the parameter. So because we want to move into the set point, it's water temp dot sp.
dot sp. So sp being the variable we're going to talk to. When I hit enter, you'll notice that it doesn't try to declare a new variable because it already recognizes that that is a variable belonging to this function block. We want to create a, a tag or a, a variable here that we can write into from maybe a touch screen or something along those lines. So we'll call that one there set water temp. And when we declare that, we'll declare it as a global variable. Sorry. Global variable. And I think we might make that a retain simply because once we write it in, we'd like it to stay regardless of whether the PLC loses power or anything like that. So the FP address for a global retain, if we can come in here and go next free address, or first free address, sorry, and we'll go into DT area. Straight away it knows for the FPOR C14 that we're likely to be using here, that the DT1200 or 12000 is the first retain address. Okay. Data type though, we're actually creating this as an integer. Okay, and we select OK. Alright, when we move down to the next one, now we're actually reading from the variables. So we want to read out of the block the actual manipulated variable. So this is the outcoming value from the PID. That outcoming value will be water temp dot mv. We're going to move that variable into directly into our analog output number one. So if we type analog output one. Hit enter. Again, I'll create this as a global variable, so therefore we can address directly. Its FP address is actually WY30 in this case. That's the first analog available to us on the first expansion module of a FP, FPOR PLC. Okay, going the opposite way around, we also need to bring in the, the process variable from the thermocouple or the RTD depending on what it is and that's going to be our first analog address of our incoming so we'll create analog input number one we'll declare this again as a global variable and we'll select in here WX30 because that's the first one available to us and we're moving that analog input into the function block and that's actually order temp pv so dot pv and that's really all the basics we need to get things going there are some other nice features available though where we can set up an auto tune and we can monitor that auto tune progress so to do that, we need to go to our instructions, select with enable, because we want to only make this happen when we require it. We're going to get a rising edge trigger uh, boolean here, and this could be from a touch screen, uh, or it could be a push button on your panel, but in this case we'll take it as a, as a button from the touch screen. So we're going to uh, create a tag on this for start auto tune declare that variable again as a global so we can address it and we don't really mind where that is but in this particular case it's um, just in a R0 or it could be R100 whatever you like let's make it R100 we go OK. So from the screen we could address R100 and we trigger this and we start an auto tune. So from a maintenance page maybe within your touch screen. Now we're actually writing to the control word of this PID block so we need to address that. So that of course is called water temp 
dot control. So now what we do to move that in, if you remember when we looked at the initial value up here in the in this function block, it says here control mode bit 15 true equals auto-tune active. So we need to put a number in here in an hex because it is a word value. So the hex value that will make a 1 appear in your bit 15 is 8000. So if we put in here 16 hash to tell it we want it in hex format 8000, that will actually trigger that 15th bit to go high, therefore triggering the auto tune for just one moment because this is a rising edge trigger. So we only move it once. Now to watch what happens when we're doing that, we simply go to another move, a standard move, okay, without the enable, and down here we'll put in there water temp dot at underscore progress. Therefore we can monitor that bit within the function block. A T underscore progress. And we move that into order or into a bit or into a tag just simply for us to monitor. So it doesn't need to have a real address. Unless of course you wanted to put that back on the screen to see what's going on. Underscore. Okay. So we hit enter on that. We'll declare it in this case to keep it consistent so we can see it on the screen as a global variable. We had R100 before. Uh, this needs actually, sorry, this needs to be a DT and we'll just go DT100. That's why. That's not a Boolean. That's an integer. And we click OK. Now we'll just quickly check our program and then even though I'm only running simulator we should be able to see a little bit of activity to show that the thing is actually working. So I'll compile all. I have zero errors, zero warnings. Always nice. Close that. Come up here and we'll go into online mode. Compile all. Yeah. Okay. Now the PLC is running in, once I press that, in simulation. So at the moment, if I set the water temperature up, you make it 500, hit enter, and straight away you can see the output manipulator variable driving high, forcing the valve open to try and get a response from the system. Now obviously, as I don't have a closed loop here, we can't see the reaction of that. However, if I actually start to see our analog uh, sorry, if I start to indicate here through our water temperature that we're getting a value, if I say put in here 50, it's still rising. Okay, if I go to 100, still rising. It's still trying to drive there as far as it's concerned simply because of the functionality within the block has the rise time and it's settled now because it's actually got to where it needs to be. Like I said, very difficult to show in a, not with a closed loop system um, in, in simulation, but at least you can see that it is operating. If we were now to trigger the start auto tune process, you'll see this goes to 8000, so it's pushed it through. Immediately water temp MV goes to zero. Okay, and if we come down a little further, you can see it's at the step one. It's very hard to drive this, but it goes through the five steps itself when it starts to see the system react. So at the moment, it's turned it off, waiting to see what the analog input does. If I go to zero here, this jumps to two. It then goes to full value. So if I drive the analog value up to, again, 500. Now we jump to three and then to four. So it's stepping through the auto-tune progress. Hopefully this helps. It's a very simple block to use. You don't need to go to auto-tune, but of course it is a very nice feature in all of the Panasonic PLCs, not just the high-end. Uh, most competitive products don't necessarily give you an auto-tune feature until you get to the high-end product. So hopefully this has been helpful. 
And of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to call Control Logic. We'll be happy to help out. Thank you.